Okay, right now I want to try and explain how a four-stroke internal combustion engine works very quickly. This is the cylinder head on a Chevrolet small block V8. There are four cylinders on each side in a V pattern. Now, these are the intake and exhaust valves inside the combustion chamber. Combustion chambers are different sizes, different volumes, and intake and exhaust valves are also different sizes depending on the machine work, what they're off of, high performance parts, etc. The intake valve is bigger to allow more air and fuel mixture into the cylinder. That is the spark plug hole that's the inside of when you screw your spark plugs in. And this combustion chamber combined with the pistons, whichever you install, make up the compression ratio. And a compression ratio is explained like this. When the piston is at the top dead center of the stroke moving up and down in the cylinder, that is your one in a, let's say, 10 to 1 compression piston or 10 to 1 compression engine. Now, compression ratio, that's your one. And as the piston moves down in the cylinder, it causes a vacuum just like a reverse syringe. And that vacuum sucks in air and fuel when your intake valve is open letting air and fuel into the cylinder so as this moves down this would be like a three to one volume three times the volume of top dead center four five six and so on so your total compression as it reaches the bottom of the cylinder that would be ten times the volume as when the piston is at the top that would be ten to one compression and that can also be modified depending on piston and builders and so on. That's your first stroke, sucks down. That's your intake stroke. The valves close. Then with both valves closed, the piston moves back up. That compresses the air and fuel. When it reaches roughly 6 to 15 degrees before top dead center, the spark plugs fire and burns the air and fuel mixture. It does not explode as some people like to think. It actually burns the fuel just like spitting beer on a campfire. That burning fuel expands and that compresses, that pushes the piston down. That is your power stroke. So your intake, compression, and your power stroke. And the power stroke pushes the piston down as the air and fuel mixture burns and expands. On the exhaust stroke of a four-stroke motor, the smaller exhaust valve will open up and the piston will travel up the cylinder. And as it travels up the cylinder, it pushes out all the burned air and fuel, blows the exhaust out, the exhaust valve out the manifold, and that is your stroke number four on a four-stroke internal combustion engine. And it starts all over. Intake on the head opens up. Piston moves down to ten times the volume or whichever compression you have. That's your intake stroke. Piston, the crank continues to turn. Piston moves back up, compresses the air and fuel. That's your compression stroke. Number two, spark plug fires, burns the air and fuel mixture. Expanding gases push the piston back down. That makes your power. That's your power stroke, stroke number three. Then the piston moves back up. Exhaust valve opens, and the piston pushes all the burn gases out of the engine and starts over and that's a four stroke internal combustion engine and compression ratio. So as you can see on our Chevrolet small block engine with a stroker crank a, making it a 383 the longer stroke which moves the rods down farther and the pistons down farther in the cylinder upping the compression we have taken a die grinder and we have clearanced our block to make room for the rod throws and as you can see we've got a lot more clearance here now than what we had before making it safer no worries of anything cracking breaking getting caught in there 
or uh, screwing anything up. Okay, we're ready to install our camshaft on our 383 Stoker Chevy. Um, this is the camshaft that came out of it, supposedly, and we're just going to clean it up real quick with some scratch bright. Go over the lobes very lightly just to get some of the rust, surface rust and oxidization off of it. Then we'll spray it with some brake cleaner and wipe it down, clean it really good. Okay, we're ready to put our camshaft in and we want to make sure that the number one cylinder is on top dead center, which is where this marker is on your crank gear for your timing chain. And just got to remember, same as with the piston rings, just remember tits up, you'll be fine. Okay, to install our camshaft, we're going to need our assembly lube. We're going to need some high pressure camshaft lube, specifically for the cam lobes. And what we have here is uh, just a longer bolt to put in the front of the camshaft to help us hold it while we're putting it in. And this is a hydraulic cam, non-roller, and the lobes are going to be a little bit different if it was a true roller cam. And a roller camshaft means that the lifters that go on top of it, these are a flat tappet. This, is, this part's flat. It's hydraulic lifters, which means there's a little spring in here. This fills up with oil, making it a hydraulic unit. And a solid lifter would be a basically a solid piece with no give to it. And a roller cam and roller lifters, this part right here, instead of being flat, would actually have little rollers on it like this like these rockers do. These are a roller rocker, full roller rocker with bearings in them, roller bearings here, roller tips on the ends and a roller cam would have this little roller part at the bottom of the lifter. But this is not a roller so we don't need to worry about that. Also if it was a roller cam there would be a cam plate that bolts onto here to hold the cam from moving in and out, but we don't need that with a hydraulic camshaft. So if you want to know which way the camshaft goes, you got the gear towards the back to turn the distributor. These are the cam lobes, bearing, journals, and at the front there are the holes that the timing chain gear will bolt onto, and the alignment tab, alignment dowel for the timing gear and you've got the rounded lobe for the push rod for your fuel pump. So you've got the rounded lobe in the front for the push rod for the fuel pump and the gear in the back to turn the distributor. Alright, before you install your cam you want to make sure you get assembly lube on the bearing journals and some assembly lube on the gear for the distributor and make sure you smear those on. Alright, make sure that you smear your assembly lube on your gear, your drive gear, and on your cam journals. You get the idea. Okay, when you're installing your camshaft, make sure you've got your cam lobes covered well with your high pressure cam lube. I know it looks kinda like fake blood, but Wait a minute, I think that is blood. Okay, tip. These edges on the camshaft are very sharp, so be careful when you're installing these and when you're smearing the goo on them. So remember never to force your camshaft in. You may need to spin it a little as you're pushing it in to clear some of the cam lobes, especially on a 3D3 stroker. And once you have it set like so, you can take your handle off, unscrew your long bolt like so. and we'll show you how to line it up. We're going to test fit and line up our cam gear. This is our cam gear. Single roller just means there's a single set of teeth. Double roller timing gear set would have two sets of teeth side by side. A little stronger, a little better, but we're just using used parts that we got in the box. And if you can't remember which way the gear goes, same as always, tits up so you can see it. This is the back. We've got some assembly lube on the uh, rubbing surfaces which no, won't really rub, they'll have oil going through it but we want to line up our dowel pin on our camshaft with our dowel hole on our gear 
like so. And just install one of our cam bolts like that. All right, once we've got our gear lined up on the cam, we've got one of the bolts in, holding it in place. You notice our pointer here, our dimple. This is actually gonna go tits down. And what we wanna do is we wanna line up that dimple with the dimple on our crank. So these two dimples should line up. If you're going to get into the green cams, we're going to put some shims in here. It'll change the gear, but that's a whole nother lesson. So just for now, on a basic stock build, line up our dimple here, put our dimple on our cam gear, and we're ready to put the chain on. Okay, we've taken our cam gear off. We hung our chain on it. We've already lined up our dimples. We want to make sure that we have this chain on the right tooth count so these dimples stay lined up with the cam gear and the crank gear and we're gonna hang it on like so and tighten up our bolts okay we just want to double check our alignment our teeth are lined up our dimples are lined up on our crank gear and our cam gear on our timing chain set and we just want to use a little drop of Loctite on our cam gear bolts Get these guys threaded in, zip it down with the gun, and you're good to go. Now with our cam and timing chain installed, we have our pistons installed, rod, and crank, and that, my friends, is a Chevrolet short block, which is basically an engine without the heads. And I don't know if they call it a short block because, you know, it's short without the heads. But the next thing will be the long block. And next thing we're going to do is install the heads.